I really truly believe there's a there's a better way. There's a better way of of living a life of entrepreneurship that maybe is more enlightened. Maybe it's a little bit more mindful of the balance that you have between work and play. So I want to bring up my mentor and great friend, Phil Drillet. So I'm curious, who here uh, is an entrepreneur or feel like you have entrepreneurial aspirations? By show of hands, so maybe about 80%. Cool. And you know, we've all heard the narrative that building a business is really difficult, and it's, it's intense, and it's grind and hustle. Who would be interested in learning a way to achieve more by doing less? Well, that'd be interesting. Well, I'm super excited to share this with you because this is like the coolest thing I've learned in my last 10 years of my life. So I want to transmit that to you over the next 11 minutes. So to tell you about the journey of how I came to a way of doing entrepreneurship that's easier, that feels better, that's perhaps more magical, well, I had to start on the other side of the spectrum. I grew up as a swimmer. Uh, in Canada, I was uh, I, I made to the national team there, and the whole approach to swimming was no pain, no gain. If you want to swim faster, train harder. You want to win more medals, put in more work. So I got trained early on from the age of 5 to 20, more results equals more work. So when I started my business, what do you guys think I did? I just put in so much hard work. I was in Australia doing my MBA. I would go to school during the day and build my business from 8 p.m. till 3 a.m. every day get a bit of sleep, go to school. And I remember around that time, Gary Vaynerchuk uh, had this, this quote. He said, you got to work until your eyeballs bleed out. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do that. So I literally would work, and my eyes would be so dry from me on the computer late at night. But I was like, I'd go in the mirror and be like, okay, they're not bleeding yet. I got to keep going. And eventually, I went to the eye doctor, and he said that my eyes were like deeply, deeply dehydrated. I was like, okay, I think maybe Gary V, maybe there's a different way to do this. So I moved to Boulder, and I lived in a community of entrepreneurs. We built our own little co-working space, and it was the same approach. Grind, hustle, put in the work. We had a sign in the bathroom, like if you're a guy and you're peeing, there was this little bath sign. It was like a bath, and it said relax, but we crossed it out, and we put a, a sticky note that said hustle. So even when we're peeing, we're like, I got I to hustle to get back to work. So because I had this willpower and this discipline for my swimming days, I was able to pull it off. And the business grew, started to make more money, like it was working. But about three years into it, I started to wake up every morning with this ball of anxiety in my stomach. I don't know if you guys have ever experienced that when you wake up and first thing, there's this like existential angst. And you don't know why, but you're just like even facing the day is difficult. Like, fuck, I have so many meetings, so many things. Okay, so I kind of kept doing this for about six more months, but at some point I couldn't push it any further. I ended up, my friend invited me to a DMT ceremony, didn't really know what it was until I Googled it like half an hour before I went. I was like, oh shit, this is intense. And when I did this ceremony, took a really big hit of DMT, went somewhere, I had no visuals, I just kind of, my brain reset. And when I came back to, I started to journal. And this thing that came through, whether it was spirit, it was God, it was my higher self, I don't know who was writing, but the whole message is there's an easier way to play the game of entrepreneurship. It doesn't need to be this terribly difficult grind, get up every morning and just keep pushing even if your eyeballs are bleeding. But you're going to have to learn how to do this. You're going to have to reprogram yourself. And I don't know if you've ever had a moment in your life where you kind of receive this like insight and you're like, all right, this is the theory. Now I really got to go and practice this. I got to, like the way for me it felt is like I was a PC all my life and now I need to become a Mac. But in order to make this transition, I kind of need to go to, compu to the computer shop for a while. So I moved to Ojai, this little town in California, went to the mountains and started to work on developing more yin energy. So that was um, yang energy, masculine energy, crush it, hustle, discipline, essentially what I was doing all the time. Yin, flow, grace, magic. And it felt so exciting, but I didn't know how to do that. So I went to Ojai, started to practice this. And around that time, one of my mentors helped me share this, um, this framework, the four stages of consciousness. And this is what this is really is. So all of us, if we are going to get fully enlightened, we're going to go through four stages of consciousness. Stage one 
victim consciousness. Life happens to me. A lot of people in the world are there. They're just like, oh, the world, it's unfair, the government. No, no, no. Lots of people here or in the personal development world ascend to stage two, creator consciousness. Creator consciousness is like, oh my God, I can influence the world around me. I can, if I work hard, if I do things, I can improve my stock in life. Very exciting. I don't know if you guys remember when you discovered personal development, you're like, ooh, if I read these books and I do these meditations, my life will be better. Super exciting. But that's only stage two. Stage three, once you decide you want to ascend because you're working so freaking hard in stage two, is co-creator consciousness. Co-creator consciousness is I'm going to do my part and I'm going to let God, the universe, do its part. And it's this dance. And we need to realize what is my part? Where do I need to put in hard work? And where do I need to open and align with a higher power so that there's magic in my life? We've been talking about entrepreneurship and I haven't heard, I have not been here the whole time, but we haven't talked about God. And, you know, that's a charged word, but let's say this higher force. Is building a business just in our own hands? Is it like up to me and I got to just make it happen and go raise the money and hire the employees? Or could there be grace in business? Well, I started to experiment because I didn't want to do the exhausting thing anymore. I just couldn't. And so... I started to practice this. And what it looked like in practice is that I realized that maybe my hard work I need to put in is not to grind, is not to crank out two more emails at night when I'm fucking exhausted. Maybe it's to do more inner work, to meditate more, to do the things that make me feel aligned, make me feel really good, and somehow make me magnetic to opportunities, to money, to miracles. And so it was a journey to do that. But now I've started to push the experiment even further because it's been working. It's been working. It's super exciting. You know, people go to Burning Man and they say stuff shows up at the perfect time. I've never been, but I've experienced that here. You know that festival magic where just like, oh, there's serendipity and I'm meeting the perfect person and it's like super cool. What if building business was like that? What if we didn't have to go knock on 10 VCs door to raise funding? What if we were just going to an ecstatic dance, doing what our soul is wanting to do, and through that we meet someone who funds our business. I think that's possible. So I've been pushing the experiment further to ask myself, what are the things I'm doing in my business that don't feel energizing, that don't feel aligned, that feel like I'm doing this because I should? So I quit all social media, no more Facebook, no more Instagram. Then I got the email from my, um, my website provider, and they're like, oh, your website is expiring. And I was like, what if I don't even have a website? So I let my website expire. I went full sort of secret weapon mode. And my business is doing better than it ever has. And I'm doing better than I ever have. The right clients, the right opportunities show up on cue in the most magical ways. And all I have to do is really do my work in the morning, do my meditation, take my cold shower, and enter the day feeling like a million bucks. And if I do that, building a business is amazing when you go in just lit up, magnetic, inspired. So to help you practice this, I want to show just a couple practical nuggets. What if the values that we needed to really master to build a successful business, to create the life of our dreams, were not hard work, hustle, and discipline? What, what if those were secondary and what we actually need to master is faith, it's trust, and it's alignment? What if that's what we actually poured our energy every day to develop that? Yeah. So for some of you, maybe you're a PC right now and that means becoming a Mac and you might need to go to the computer shop like I did and be like, fuck, how did that guy, that makes sense. I can feel that in my soul, but how do I do that, bro? Well, it's going to take a little bit of time. But on a very practical level, I want to invite you, maybe do an experiment. When you come home, try this for a week, try this for a month, and decide that the most important thing you're going to do through your day is the activities that make you feel alive and inspired and aligned with the universe. Whatever that is for you. For me, it's meditation, it's gratitude, it's cold showers, things like that. What is it for you? Spend 25% 20% less time working in your business, cranking out emails, and spend 20% more 
having amazing tantric sex, going to shows, spending time with your friends, really dropping in. And you will experience yourself as a more alive person. And in my experience, miracles will come to show and your business will grow in a way that is beyond understanding and feels really freaking good. So thank you for listening. Experiment with this. God bless you.